Okay, so today I saw this video in my suggested and I figured it's just meant to be that I should react to it. Not the sort of thing I normally do, but just basically I have a long-standing history with being considered like a hater of Botez or whatever. Just because I was there at the very beginning, just by chance, I happened to be streaming chess like way before, you know, this explosion of chess on Twitch. Just for the fuck of it, but basically, you know, I was there when I saw them exploding in popularity and I kind of just kept criticizing the idea that they're getting so much credit despite not being like truly among the best players in the world. Some people might rebut that and say, well, you know, you're not that either or they're not, they're better than you, but that means nothing because we're talking about whether you should get credit for it or not. So it's simply about holding it to a high standard and meritocracy, like what I always talk about. And with chess, that's definitely very pertinent. Like, at least if you're Hikaru, okay, you're one of the best players in the world. Or at least if you're Benjamin Feingold, you're a grandmaster. So there should be some standard that, like, if you're a top 1,000 player in the world, you get credit for it. Or if you're a top 5,000 player in the world. But if you're, like, top 25,000, like they are and have been <clears throat> most of their careers, then it's a little bit of a question. Like, you're getting credit for kind of other things. If you want to talk about stimuli acme, people know what that means if they follow me, or whatever, like cult of personality, things like that. It's like the question of doing face cam. I'm just going to address their, their comments and sort of play devil's advocate to see what the legitimate criticisms that come out of them actually are in this. Some of them might even be mine, but I doubt it, because I don't even really comment. Um, but no, I, I sort of started that sub-2000 FIDE meme, too, because I would always say that, and then I've seen that in comments since, like just poking fun at the fact that since becoming a streamer, she actually got worse at chess, not better. The idea that you're making millions of dollars from it, you, you know, it's done so much for you that you can't give it a little effort back to actually get better. People might say, well, <clears throat> you know, it's not that easy, but uh, under a normal circumstance, think about it this way. Let's say if she had graduated from Stanford and then went on to do something else in her life other than play chess, then she could use that as an excuse, like, oh, I could have been a grandmaster or I could have been better. But I was busy with my career and family and, and real life normal things that normal people have to do, which is not just playing chess and studying chess all day every day. The difference is she's had the luxury to play chess and study chess all day every day, or at least that's a base relation to her content and how much money she's making. For example, even people who are grandmasters don't make as much money as these streamers do. And I'm not shaming them for being successful and doing the marketing. She's obviously very good at that. But what I'm doing is I'm holding it to account that if you are getting that much from it, right you even of your own merit in those other ways like marketing yourself and everything like that you could at least give back to the game and say like okay i'm gonna really make a put pressure on myself to try to become as good as i can and improve instead she fell below 2000 feet a which again i know people will ad hominem me but that doesn't make any point at all here like okay i'm even worse than her and i'm you know completely garbage but like, she's better than me, people would say, but this is like the queen of the sandcastle argument. Like, it's not hard to be normally the king of the sandcastle, but here it's more appropriate. Just the fact that it's not hard to be better than me, or it's not hard to be better than the average person, but to actually get recognition and all this sort of renown and attention, you would like it to at least be tied to that. So even if Hikaru is like reacting to memes and he's doing face camp too, and there's an element of cult of personality to that, at least he has the 2800 as a base to it, right? Like he's one of the best players in the world, one of the best players ever, and then everything else is a bonus. Here, that's a base, not the bonus, because you're only a, that's one thing we have in common, right? We're both sub 2000 FIDE players, or all three of us. I, I won't pick on Andrea too much because it's not really even pertinent, but just <clears throat> whatever. Okay, so let's see what they have to say. Usually we ignore the haters, but today we're going to react to mean comments. My favorite comment of all time, why is she always yelling at sweet Andrea like an old hag? Wait, shut up, I've had it with you. I'm done, you're so annoying today. I think the comparison of Alex to an old hag, it's so funny because people always think I'm like a little 12 year old kid. Not. Okay, that has nothing to do with anything, so I'll kind of just skip this first one, but what I will say about her is she's, we're not trying to personally attack anybody, you know, she went to Stanford, she's very smart, so we're not questioning that, but I do think there is a certain thing that rubs everybody the wrong way when it comes to feeling like you're getting credit for something else. In other words, there's, there's 25,000 people, let's say, in the world who are <clears throat> around her FIDE rating or above. And so, like, they don't get the same amount of credit. So it's not because of that. And you could say that's true with a lot of things. I'll even defend it maybe a little bit. Like, you know, most of the top content creators on Twitch are not just always Shroud or Faker or Hikaru, where they're actually, like, among the best at what they do, or they're, like, esports players or things like that. Right? Some of them are just genuinely, 
you know, like XQC now. He may maybe started out as an esports player with Overwatch, but then what he's become since then is he just does all kinds of random things. So that is a cult of personality basis as well. And those people do face cam too. So when I mention the face cam criticism, it's not a case of talking about the stimuli acme thing like their looks or something like that is basically what that refers to i know people will try to qualify it that way but i'm not even saying that I, that can be an element of it and in fact there's a pokemon related comment that <clears throat> i'll use maybe later or i'll just mention it now but basically the point is you do face cam not just for that purpose that people will think of but you'll also do it so they can see your expressions reactions put a face to the name, do all these kind of things. So it would be interesting as a thought experiment, what if they never did face cam? And you might think, what relevance does that have? But if they never did face cam, <clears throat> it's not that, oh, they wouldn't be popular because of the stimuli acme part, but it's because they wouldn't be popular because they're not putting a face to the name and, and associating it with them, right? Like sort of making the content more about them or other things. And so therefore the chess would have to speak for itself as the saying goes. And so what that means is that would be held to a higher standard. So nobody's just going to sit there and watch 2000 feet of chess or, you know, sub 2000 feet of chess. Because the problem with that is, or again, they could just be so entertaining that that could happen, but at least then you're, okay, you're Levy, you're 2400, it would hold it to a higher standard because now what you're doing on screen, on stream has to speak for itself more, right? Whether it be your instructive commentary, whether it be your high level play, <clears throat> things like that. So what you're doing with the face cam and other things and cult of personality, even a video like videos like this that they do, it distracts from that, right? That, that's my whole objection to face cam, which to be fair, a lot of people do it. So it's not just for them. How is she famous for chess? but her rating is 1,000. Now, I already know what they're gonna say to this. Well, technically it's not 1,000. It's like 1,700 Fide and Andrea, or it's like 1,900 Fide for Huggy and Alex. So the point is that it's still not very high. Like you could ask the question again, how are they so popular, famous, even though there are only 1,900 or less Fide? That's still a legitimate question because whether you're 1,000 or not, like let's say I'm 1,000, although I'm a little higher than that, you shouldn't be famous for that, nor should you be famous for being just around 2000. That legitimately could be asked that like, how are you famous still, right? That they'll defend it. This is the perfect devil's advocate claim. Like they're gonna mock the fact that, oh, I'm not actually a thousand, I'm actually 1700. That's a good question, sir. I guess I'm just really funny. Crazy how much more you resemble Alex when your hair is down and you look depressed. I oh, they don't even address that either. Without makeup, when I'm playing chess, I get so intense. I have resting bitch face and it looks like I'm depressed, but I am just focusing. That's just focusing, but apparently just focusing on your content more than anything because your rating hasn't gone up at all. Uh, you might use these online ratings. I'm sure they'll bring that up later. That's how we were born. That's just how we look like. This was a video I did with one of my grandmaster friends and I wear lipstick or lip gloss pretty often. Notice Alex wore red lipstick. She is attracted to Daniel and the lipstick sends a signal. She is available. So here we go. One of those stimuli acne arguments. I'm not going to approach from that angle, but what I will say is, okay, she went out with Eric Hansen at one point. I'm not going to really use that against her, but what I will say is there's this sense of still chasing clout from a lot of people over the years because in the absence of, again, being a grandmaster or something like that, she had to do it in other ways. So I'm not saying she went out with Eric because of that, but it certainly benefited her nonetheless, and so people will perceive it that way. But even beyond that, like a lot of things she's done over the years, or here's a legitimate use of the stimuli acne that maybe people wouldn't bring up or they would misframe it. A lot of content on their channel involves like Tinder, like, oh, Alex made a Tinder profile or a chess grandmaster plays me for my number or plays me for a date and things like that. There's at least like five, 10, 20 videos like that or maybe more that make some sort of reference to that side of things. So if you wanna say like, oh, you know, it's certain, perceptions exist because okay they're female chess players and this and that it's a question of how much you choose to play into that or not so don't tell me that oh you know people look at you a certain way because you're a female chess player but then you say oh here's a tinder profile and here's a video where somebody's playing me for my number or playing me for a day why would that be necessary to do or make sense in any other case is benjamin feingold posting videos like that where oh he's playing somebody for their number or, or for his number like it doesn't really make maybe for coaching lessons or something but it, it is sort of like you choose how to portray yourself and that's sort of playing into it in a way that 
is questionable. Since he is a chess player, he probably won't notice. LOL. Every time I do any video with a guy, there's always You're doing it people for them. Are just, yeah. It's always hilarious to me that girls think they can compete with men in chess. Or I do any video with a guy, there's always You're doing it for them. Just, yeah. It's I like how they say that they're doing it for love. No, they're doing it for content and chasing clout. You see how cold and like the ruthless businesswoman Pokemon perspective on, uh, you know, that's how you could think of Alex. Like she's done everything so perfectly to get herself in this position, but maybe hurt a lot of people's feelings along the way or misled them or whatever, which again, she doesn't owe anything to that, but you have to at least be aware. Like th that's why I would almost criticize them. I would criticize the audience for rewarding such behavior, or I would criticize people for associating with it. Like, you know, why is Magnus validating a sub-2,000 FIDE player? In what other context would Magnus spend so much time, like, being on their streams and doing all this with somebody who's sub-2,000 FIDE, unless it, unless it was for the purpose of coaching them? Which, in, of course, in this case, goes out the window because they have no interest in that. That's the real criticism. It's like, it's a lack of effort. They would rather do stuff like this, or they would rather somehow, you know, j just focus on doing content rather than using the fact that their content has been so successful as a benchmark to say, let's let's hold ourselves to a high standard and try to improve and try to actually commit to it right at some point it's like oh our content's so successful let's just ditch chess or let's just use it as a prop we have no real interest in it because you can't tell me they couldn't have improved especially when you're making millions of dollars again not a negative but that's such a positive that it gives you the chance and the freedom to focus on it in a way that you legitimately wouldn't have been able to in an ordinary circumstance because you're not making enough money from it or you're, you don't have time, you have personal life and responsibilities that have been alleviated by the success you've gotten from it. So it's almost like you owe something back to it to try to improve at it. It's always hilarious to me that girls think they can compete with men in chess or anything else. Now this one's obviously just too much of a straw man bait sort of thing that's just easy to disqualify. Obviously we know Judith Polgar, we know countless other people. This is just a dumb comment, obviously. Time! Oh. What are these two doing living together? Aren't they like 30 years old? We are in our 20s, thank you very much. And even if we were in our 30s, there's nothing wrong with living with your roommate. I, what? Your sister. Yeah, you're both. I could be 90 years old living with my sister and I I'll skip some of these because they're not really pertinent to anything, but one thing that I did say early on is that it was very positive and impressive how she ingratiated her sister into it. At the beginning, it, Alex seemed like she felt very uncomfortable with doing that, and it was like, you know, she had been so successful already and it was exploding. I'm talking about early on. And so it was kind of a risk. Like, they might joke about it now, Andre has a brand risk, this and that. But in a legitimate sense, that's a good call to say, like, she went out of her way to unconditionally sort of help and ingratiate Andrea into doing this sort of content, which is a net positive in the end, but at the beginning that would be very difficult to do, right? Like I know a lot of people would be uncomfortable doing that with a sibling or something like that where it just wouldn't feel right, that they wouldn't want to either put their content at risk or make it feel like you're dumbing it down in some way or whatever, it would be difficult. So that's a very kind and unconditionally positive thing she did. And I would be very content. No professional woman can be a professional grandmaster man in chess, LOL. Unrealistic show, stick to kitchen and playing hearts. This is similar to the other one from before. So let's see what they say. This man has no idea how bad I am at cooking. Alex, I don't think it's cooking like that. And on top of that, let's not forget that Judith Polgar, the greatest female of all time, beat Gary Kasparov, one of the greatest chess players of all time. And there's countless of other examples of females beating males as well. But again, you do get a lot of comments like this. She is 20. There's one problem with that rebuttal is that you're not one of those players. She says there are countless players like that, but you're not one such player. So on one hand, the criticism isn't fair because they're not addressing you specifically. They're addressing women overall. So I guess it's a fair defense then to bring up Judith Polgar because she is just a woman as they're referring to. But in the context of your rebuttal, it's also invalid because you're saying there are plenty of great female players who can be grandmasters, but you're not one of them. And so therefore, or maybe she has at some point, but... I don't know about over the board, maybe online in some Blitz game or something, but the point, I mean, even under certain time control, she's beaten Magnus, but that obviously doesn't count. But yeah, you are not one of the such players that you're referring to. She is 26, question mark. 
Doesn't she find a man now? If she waits more <laughs> years, she will become a cat lady. My sister is actually a... She, does, she did lie about her age on her Twitch profile where she said it was like two or three years lower than what it is. And that's like some running joke apparently. But that should be breaking the Twitch TOS. I, I had that little moment where she made me remember one of my old catchphrases is factually objectively incorrect. Bird lady, not a cat In your lady. Face. Get it right, dude. Can't wait for them to get older so I can start calling them the Botox sisters. I don't know what people's obsession are with calling us the Botox sisters. We've never had Botox. I've beaten both of them. This might seem kind of like a strange one, but basically the fact is, okay, whatever that making fun of your appearance is irrelevant, but the point being that if you didn't want such comments, then you could just not do face cam. Now you might feel like, oh, you shouldn't have to do that just to avoid such things, but it's sort of like a uh, net positive too. Like there's going to be certain benefits you get from doing face cam. There's going to be certain negatives. And so it's like, again, you're just making it about something that doesn't have to do with actually the content. What purpose does it really serve to do that? And I've already laid out why, but you're putting a face to the name. You're sort of making it more about you than the content. You're kind of distracting from it because it is ultimately sub 2000 feet HS. So it's not exactly the biggest draw otherwise. On the live stream, by the way, but my ELO is around 2300. When I think theirs is around 1800, Maiden doesn't know our ELO as usual. They are YouTubers, not chess players. No. Well, they are YouTubers, not chess players. They would even admit it. Look at what they're doing right now. But basically, if you're 2300 feet, you could easily beat them. Like Dina, it could be Dina commenting, right? She's 2300. But no, like 1800 is actually too high. I think Andre is only 1700 feet. Eh? Legit players, that is. If he's beaten me on a live stream, my blitz rating is 2300 and my bullet is 2500. This man is just trying to flex and put us down. But that would be an inflated website ratings, dude. Even I was like 17, 1800 on the chest. That doesn't fucking mean anything. Although she's probably referring to chess.com, but still, like. You cannot use an online rating. In no world has she ever been 2300 anything in real life. That reminds me of the people that peaked in high school and they just hang they, on they to it for the rest of their life. Yes. Kind of like Alex at chess when she was younger, how she was uh, the same FIDE ratings from when she was a kid till she started streaming and then it only went down from there. That's really peaking early. Logic is not the strong trait women have. Honestly. Okay, some of these are just like, we get it. Okay, there's going to be some like this, but that, that doesn't matter. True. Because every time her extremely intelligent, in quotation marks, sister screams, she looks like she's trying really hard to prevent an aneurysm from happening. I really hope Alexandra's okay. Alex, are you? See, now at least they do it for content, but if you look, if there are still clips from like really when they first started, you would see, or when she first started to try to bring Andrea into it, you would see that she would have been legitimately more uncomfortable. It's similar to something I said about Hikaru, like where he seemed so uncomfortable at the beginning of his streaming career with respect to like reacting to emotes in chat or things like that. It, it sort of made him uncomfortable, which even to this day, maybe he's a little bit of a stick in the mud when it comes to that. But basically he just seemed like, I played and studied my chess my whole life and I'm one of the best players in the world just to react to memes on in Twitch chat and to react to Reddit posts and like do all this kind of stupid inane stuff that seems like lowest common denominator. It almost seemed like it, it didn't suit him. So he felt uncomfortable with that and Alex felt uncomfortable with Andrea, but they both overcame that. OMG, it's another cute girl that's terrible at chess that doesn't work for a living. You're I mean, it's a form of work, obviously, to do the content that they've done, so I won't say that, but the percentile queen of the sandcastle argument. Like, you know how mean- this is the most triggering thing of all. You're showing those percentiles, they don't even have to say anything. That means nothing, because you're- you know what that means? You're better than people who don't play chess. That's all it means. Like, even- you can be 1300 rating, and you're- you're better than 985% of people. Because only 15, 10-15% of people in the world even take it remotely seriously. And so out of this 1%, it's not something to brag about. I, I find that very annoying. That This is always the expression that I would use, like, Queen of the- King of the Sandcastle. In other words, you can be better than everyone who doesn't study the game or take it as seriously as you when you've studied it for years of your life and played it for such a long time, but you can't be better than the people who are doing the same thing as you, who also play it for a long period of time and take it seriously. Now you're, you have 25,000 people or so better than you in the world. It's really a weak argument to do that. You're right. Life is easy. I'm in fact not doing anything right now. The money just, I just wake up and the dollars just roll in and life is super easy, dude. You nailed it. Yes. I mean, for her sake, you almost think that because it is Alex's channel first and foremost. Some of these are just so ridiculous. I was like, you live in your fantasy world. 
or even Hikari says that himself. Even as a 2800 Super Grandmaster, he still says I'm a content creator first and foremost. But you can't even invent that. Alex is about to lose her ability to have babies. Think about how many of these comments relate to this sort of thing, too. Some of them are unfair, obviously, just the fact that they're female players, but a lot of them are, again, it's sort of something they play into themselves. He's on to me. Next comment. From the many times I've seen these girls play chess, I believe their rating is around 1,500 the most. Does anyone know what their rating is? I mean, you can easily just look it up. She's like 1977 FIDE, and then obviously as the creator of that meme, basically, because of how many times I said it a couple years before, uh, when she fell below 2,000, I should know that by heart, which again is only like top 20 or 25,000 in the world. I was 1,800 when I was 12, you asshole. Also yeah, and you haven't gotten much higher than that. So that means from 12 to 20, whatever she is, she's only gotten like a 100 something rating, right? She got over 2,000 and then fell below it again. So by the time it takes you to write that comment, you could have just Googled our USCF. Yeah, see, that's not accurate. Factually, objectively incorrect. I don't, oh, USCF, you know, you're hiding behind that. L look at how they strategically, th this is actually kind of smart. They talk about their online ratings, how she's like 2300 on inflated, you know, websites like chess.com or Le Chess or whatever. And then you're talking about USCF. What about FIDE? You're sub 2000 FIDE. You, you don't deserve this. Factually, objectively incorrect. You're sub 2000. You don't get to say that. And she's right. like 1700. Take Are you on the spectrum? Hey, been asked this many most times. intelligent people are the ones on the spectrum. One sign of multiple Yeah, I was going to say that. Like, she's been to Stanford and very successful in a lot of other areas besides just chess, so, or a successful period. So you, even if you were autistic, you would be very high functioning. Multiple sclerosis is droopy eyelids. Ptosis is another name for sagging eyelids. This is why Alex will never marry. There's so many people obsessed with me being a cat lady, not having babies, never marrying. I've had it. I'm gonna get birds and live with my sister when she gets rid of my boyfriend. This he does have like that sort of nerdy, geeky quality that is both a good fit for sort of the Twitch streaming culture, but also something you wouldn't expect to be so successful. Like you almost would think she'd be a little bit awkward socially in real life for whatever reason. Like think about somebody who plays chess all the time. That would be a perfect analogy. No, dude, I'd escape too. I don't know how long you've been surviving. This one. Is Here's a good comment by one of my friends who is always posting chess related stuff too. Like, Andrea would have been that passive aggressive fast food worker if it wasn't for her sister. Is on my I do not have anger issues. This was actually a nice comment. Man raging, people laugh. Woman raging, people say she's crazy. And that's how I feel. I'm not crazy, right? Oh, one of my favorite videos of theirs I actually took down some time ago. It was like her doing some sort of a brain teaser type of thing where she had to keep memorizing stuff, like memorizing sequences of numbers on some kind of IQ test site or something. And she would keep having these over-the-top reactions. She'd either be so bummed out when she would, would fail to get it, or she'd be like so hyper-enthusiastic. And that seems like that genuine nerdy side that I was talking about that's kind of surprising to see in someone so popular in the mainstream. What's the opposite of skill? She has a lot of that. Which, it's funny, because it's titled Massive DJ Fail. It's called Cult of Personality, Basic Psychological Process. It's two seconds out of a three-hour stream. But yes, you're so right, sir. And, you know, I hope my DJ career succeeds, because I don't have any skill. And this really shows you the shame of it all, too. It's like you're you're known for chess. So they, they moonlight as chess players, content creators, streamers, DJ dancers whatever like how they're dancing in the background of magnus's stream boxers like how, how many things can you do and not be good at any of them at the high level actually not like this fake percentile statistic you want to use Gork is actually a good friend of mine okay okay <laughs> we streamed together maybe two and a half years ago and another chasing clown instance not even deferring to the stimuli acme just again whatever you do along the way but it's a two-way street you don't have to associate with such people so you could blame them too and again blame the audience for rewarding it people have been shipping us since he's a famous league of legends player alex's sister is so bubbly and vibrant i'd marry her any day sir before you propose this turn from hate comments to love comments like what does all this have to do with anything marriage maybe get our name right you are alex's sister and i'm here for it stop deleting videos because they aren't getting enough views dot 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 we can clearly see what you're doing. I never understood the concept of that either. It's just sort of a net positive. But no, that, that brain teaser one would have, was perfect. I don't know why they got rid of that. We're doing our best, okay? It's like it was too genuine. That's too much how she actually is. And instead you have to put on a facade. It's called trying. <laughs> and on that note, that is all the hate comments that
that we have to read today. You miss a lot from my friend because he sort of will surrogate quote some of the stuff I've said over the years, or I probably said some back in the day too. Leave a comment down below that's maybe not a hate comment for us to react to. And make sure to like this video. That is kind of a bait though. A lot of people will put negative comments just to play into it a little bit. That we don't have to delete this one as well.